Hi, it's Sora here from The Wizard's Code. In an earlier video, I showed you how you could very quickly create a tropical paradise using the Tropical Forest Pack, Enviro, and Procedural Worlds Gaia Pro. But I said, I've already created the biomes for you, you don't have to worry about it. And I didn't show you how to create those, or how to create the height map. So that's what this video is about, we're going to learn how to create the height map, we're going to create the biomes for the textures, and in subsequent videos we'll focus on the vegetation. So let's get going. I've already imported Gaia and the Tropical Forest Pack, and as always I've also set my lighting to Linear Deferred. Next up there's some things that you need to do in order to set up the shaders for the Tropical Forest Pack. This is documented in a video linked from the asset page on the Unity store, but it's easy enough for you to do. You just need to open up the project settings, go to the graphic settings and scroll down. At the bottom, you'll find a list of all of the shaders that are in use. You need to set up custom shaders in the deferred and deferred reflections shader slot. Can't say that very easily. Select the CTI internal deferred shader for the deferred slot and the CTI internal deferred reflections shader for the deferred reflections slot. Okay, now we're ready to create our height maps. On the first view, Sky is going to do some initial setup for me. This takes a few moments, so I'll fast forward the video at this point. Now that Gaia has finished its initial configuration, the Gaia Manager will take us through a few more configuration steps. The first one is to set up post-processing, which we can install from the Unity registry. And the second one is to set the lighting to the recommended linear deferred, which we've already done, but strangely Gaia doesn't notice that, so we need to click the button, but it clears the error message, so we're good. Now we're ready to start working. First we need to select the size of the world that we want. I'm going with a medium world, which is one kilometer square. I'm going to use a custom biome for texturing and vegetation. We need the stamper to be created, because that will allow us to create the height map. We could get started at this point, but first let's set up some of the runtime environments to save us coming back here later. I'm going to add the flying camera so that I can explore the world in play mode. I'm also going to use the procedural world sky. I'm actually going to replace it later in these videos with Enviro, but I thought it'd be good to see how effective the built-in sky can be. We can now start stamping our terrain. Let's go to the island stamps. I've got a particular idea for this island, so I want something that's fairly flat so that I can run around in it and drive some vehicles and so on. But I also want a nice big bay that can form a kind of base area. So this stamp here looks pretty good as our starting point. Let's have a look around it in the scene view. All right, I do see the beginnings of what could be a bay up in this top right corner. It looks pretty good, but I'm gonna need some more space to finish off that bay in the top corner. So I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, move it down into this bottom left corner here. Now let's just make sure that I'm inside the bounds of the terrain. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Can probably afford to make it a bit larger. I'm going to apply this stamp and then click the stamp button. And there we go, our initial island is done. This looks pretty good already, but I'd like to be able to see it in the scene view and I also want to build that bay. So let's reposition the camera, position it in the scene view and then simply select the camera and hit shift control F to move the camera to the same view as we can see in the scene view. Now I'll apply another stamp to create that bay. So I'll open up the stamper again and look for a suitable stamp to use. What I'm looking for is something that has the approximate shape that I want and then I can resize it and reposition it to get it just right. Okay, let's have a look. This looks like it might have the beginnings of a bay there. Okay, let's position it around. It looks all right. So click apply and stamp. Okay, I can probably reuse that again if I move it around a bit more and stamp again, I'll get a nice enclosed bay. There we go. Okay, I think that might be it. Let's take a look at it in play mode first though. Yep, 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. I believe we're done. I'm going to create our textures on this island now. I'll need a biome, which collects related spawners together. Spawners contain the rules for the spawning textures, vegetation and objects in the world. You'll remember I created a custom biome when configuring Gaia. So go to the custom biome object and you'll see that there is a warning that I'm using the default name. I need to give the biome a unique name to avoid name clashes. So I'll call this one Tropical Island Biome. I also need somewhere to store the config files so I'm going to create a data folder and inside there I'll create a Gaia biomes folder. The first thing I'm going to do now is create a procedural worlds Gaia spawner settings object. This one will be called the tropical island textures and this is going to contain our textures for the entire island. There's a convenient button in the inspector for adding this into the scene, so I'll click that, but I also want to associate it with the biome itself so that later I can spawn all the biomes in one go. Initially I'll only have this one, but this will be helpful later on when we have multiple spawners. Now I'll go into our texture spawner and add the first rule. This will be for the sand and I'll call it the sand base layer. I'll use the sand textures from the tropical forest pack and drop them into the spawner just here. Then I can turn on the preview in the spawner and make it yellow so that it looks like the texture that will be applied. Since I have not set any masks up yet, this is going to cover the whole terrain. So I can go ahead and spawn this spawner and that will give us sand everywhere. Now I'll add another spawn rule and call it grass. I'll set the preview to green. This one's going to be, well, the grass layer. And of course the preview will show that it covers the whole terrain but we don't want that. Before addressing that though, let's drag in our grass textures. This patchy grass looks pretty good. Now, I want to stop the texture appearing everywhere. Masks allow me to control where the texture will be applied. In this case, I don't want it appearing too close to the sea. I want sandy shores. So I add a height mask. The default configuration limits the grass to the very top of the terrain. How the height mask works is controlled by this curve. Here it says at the minimum height point don't have any grass and at the maximum height point have a full intensity of grass. So I add a key in the middle and as I move the key point you can see the minimum height in the preview changing, it's coming down the hill. Now I find it easier when doing things like this to change the height that is represented on the minimum point of the curve. This is done in the inspector, it defaults to the sea level but in this case, I'm going to change it to zero, which is the lowest point on the terrain, effectively below sea level here. This then allows me to use the height curve to bring in the exact point that I want. It just gives us more flexibility in how we use the curve. I could have done it the other way, but I would have had a very narrow space to land in. As I look around the preview in the scene view there, I can see it looks pretty good but it's a little bit strong in the transition from sand to grass. So I'm going to add another key in and I'll use that to make the transition more gradual. Okay, I think that looks a lot better now in the preview. Let's see what it looks like with the texture. I click on the spawn button to apply the textures and take a look in play mode. Flying around, it looks pretty good. There's some horrible tiling going on here and there, but I'm not too worried about that right now. It'll be broken up by the planting later on, and if there's still a problem even after that, I have some tricks that will fix it. What I'm really looking at is the transition point here between sand and grass, and it looks good for now. Looking over here, it looks okay too, though maybe the grass could do with coming down a little bit further. I'll think about that as we move along, but for now this is good enough to get on with things. The beauty of this procedural generation is I can come back at any time and tweak things. Thinking about performance for a while, it's a good idea to keep the number of textures to four, as that would be a single draw call for the terrain. If you go to five, you may as well go all the way up to eight, since those additional four textures are just one more draw call. I want to try and keep this to four for now, so I can put in some rocks and forest textures, but that's all I've got left. I'll start with the rocks and therefore I'll add a new spawn rule. I'll call this the shallow rocks. There aren't going to be any cliffs in this terrain so I'll only need one rocky ground texture. And 
guess what? The Tropical Forest Pack comes with a rocky ground texture that looks kind of good. There's also a flat rock texture, but I think that's a stone surface rather than a rocky ground. So I'm going to use the rocky ground one. It's hard to see the textures in the scene view, so I'm going to turn the light on in that view. This texture is going to go onto the steeper ground. I want the dirt and rocks to be exposed on the slopes. I need to add a slope mask to achieve this. I make the preview colour grey and turn on the preview. As you can see in the default settings for the slope mask focus on the really steep parts it's typically used for cliffs, but I want to have it on the shower slopes too. As with the height mask I can change the curve that controls the intensity of this texture on different types of slope. I can also control the end points of the curve. With a little tweaking I can get it to look exactly right. So I hit the spawn button to reapply all of the textures. Yeah, that kind of looks good. Let's take a look up here. That might be a bit much there. What I think I'll do is have more grass inside of these runoffs here. So I turn on the grass spawner preview again and also preview our rock so I can see where the rock textures are being laid. Oh, hang on. I need to move the rock textures up in the spawn hierarchy. What happens here is it spawns from the top to the bottom. So I want the rock to be spawned first and then have the grass on top of that. Now I can see that I'm getting the rocky ground on the sides of these runoffs, but not in the middle. Let's take a look at that with the real textures. Click spawn. You know, I think I need a different grass texture. This one's just too patchy. Yeah, that one looks kind of nice and bright. Yeah, that looks better already. So let's turn the rocky ground preview back on. Yeah, now this grass is so much richer, it's perhaps a little bit too strong. So I'm going to reduce the strength of the mask a little bit. This will allow the rocks to show through a little more where they are particularly strong or the grass is getting weaker. Spawning the textures, we can see that that's looking a lot better. So let's take a look around in play mode. It's a bit bland up here at the top, but that's okay. We're going to have the forest texture to add in a moment. Down here on the lower slopes and in the transition to the beach, it's looking quite good now. I definitely don't like it at the top up here, but I'll take another look when I've applied the forest texture. This ridge looks nice though. Stony ground on the one side with grass on the other side. I now need to add the forest ground. So I'll add a new spawner and select a forest texture. This one looks good. It's got a bit more green in it. I set up the preview with a nice brown colour. I want this texture to appear on the flats, so I want a slope mask here. By turning on the preview, we can see that this is going to put it on the steep slopes. That's the opposite of what I want. I want it on the flats. This is easily remedied by clicking on the curve and making it go in the inverse direction. I'm now getting this texture on the high flats, but I'm also getting it down here on the lower areas too, such as the beach. That's not what I want. So I'm going to add a height mask to limit this texture to the high ground. With a few tweaks of the curve, I can get it just right. There we go. I have the forest texture on the flat parts high up and spreading down the shallower slopes, but not going too low into the beach. So click spawn to apply all the textures and let's take a look in play mode. Yeah, I like that in general. I don't like this rocky ground down here on the beach. Let's fix that. First I'll find an area where it's happening in the scene view and go back to the rocky ground spawner and visualize it. An easy solution here would be to ensure that the rocky ground doesn't spawn on the beaches, which are on the lower ground. So I can use a height mask. I already did this on the grass texture. So I'll copy that height mask from the grass create a new mask on the rocky ground and paste in the values. And that's it. We'll spawn in again just to make sure. And yep, they're gone. Excellent. And that's it for this video. What you're looking at now is the finished product. There'll be two, maybe three more videos from this. In the next one, we're going to focus on some of the vegetation. So subscribe. See you soon.